So being in Chicago, I'm surrounded by so many Bears fans. I want to support Bears fans because I live here. I, I want to support. I ain't going to lie. But they make it so damn hard for a brother to be supporting the Bears, bro. Like, I, I'm trying to be friendly. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be like, okay, whatever. I live here. So let's support the Bears. But recently, we seen them lose to the Indianapolis Colts. 21 to 16. Um, Bears did not look that good. Uh, Kayla Williams threw over 50 passes, which is insane. And they still ended up losing the game. And I have some firm thoughts because I've been saying that the Bears, they as an organization is the problem of what's been going on, of why we've been seeing bad play, bad calling, all sort of things. They tried to put it on Justin Fields. They said Justin Fields was the issue. We can't win with a quarterback like Justin Fields. And then all of a sudden, we get a new guy called Caleb Williams, who's supposed to be the savior of the Chicago Bears. And he's supposed to be so much better than Justin Fields. He's supposed to be the holy grail that the Bears have never seen in Chicago, that Chicago has never, ever seen in the quarterback ever but then this guy is still no better than Justin Fields the O-line still can't protect anything from man oh my gosh they're worse than you might I can think of some TSA officers who can protect Justin or uh Caleb Williams better than than um than the Chicago Bears linemen out there right now um the the play calling is just ridiculous I'm seeing them call a, a speed option on fourth and goal, which is just ridiculous. And then as they call the speed option, there's not a single soul blocking anybody. This was just garbage, bro. It was garbage. And I'm like at the point, I'm done, man. I I know it's week three, but they say Bears fans is on suicide watch, which I firmly believe. I see it happening live and direct here. But look, Trav, look, what's, what's going on with these Chicago Bears, man? Is, is, it a, is it a coaching thing? Is it Caleb Williams? Is it like, what is, what, what is it, bro? What is it with them? What are you seeing with the Chicago Bears? And man, you hit the head on the nose. I think it's a mixture of everything. I think everybody that's in that house does not deserve their own room. I think Caleb Williams, <laughs> you know, like just to be real, Caleb Williams, I understand, you know, he was a number one draft pick, all this stuff. I get it. He has not thrown a touchdown pass in three weeks. This man's mm. closest touchdown pass was a Hail Mary before the half. They got stopped at the one. That would have been cool mm. if he got it, but that's neither here nor there because it didn't happen. So Caleb <laughs> Williams, like you, one thing I got to just say, stop writing checks you can't cash. You told the punter mm. before the season – you're not going to punt that much. The Bears have punted the most times in the NFL. <laughs> just in three weeks. So, like, to me, it's just, like, it's a humbling experience because, like, what he saw in preseason is different than playing with actual grown men. He was playing against some practice Bro, squad guys, you. you know, trying to make the team. So it's going to be different. I'm happy you brought up the Justin Fields thing because it was not his fault. It's the system. It's the organization. And I hope, hmm. truly hope Caleb Williams gets better. I don't want to see him, you know, be bad. But – I think he just needs to stop writing checks he can't cash. And, you know, it's a humbling experience. It's different than USC. Facts, bro. And, and, you know, that that's just it, bro. I, I'm like, you know, from the very, very beginning, like since they first, even before they drafted Caleb Williams, bro, they did so much. They did so much to decorate this Bears team and, and give them so much promise. You you draft, you put receiving pieces. You got a defense that's actually not that bad. <laughs> like the defense is pretty damn good in Chicago, but it's like the defense, of course, is going to look garbage when your offense can't help them out at all. So it's like you you know they did all of these different things to help Kayla Williams come into probably one of the best situations that you can come into on in terms of having offensive weapons. However, they just forgot one silly piece that is going to make or break the whole thing, and that's having an offensive line. And then now it's like, bro, it's so evident because, one, you still ain't got no offensive line. And then on top of not having an offensive line, your play calling is still atrocious, so that's hurting them even more. And now to make it even better, which I love, I I really love this part right here. This is really going to get some of y'all. I love that we're seeing Justin Fields thrive in another system, in another organization that is 3-0. And And not only is this team 3-0, not only do they have a great defense, but the offense is helping out the defense that's so great over in there in Pittsburgh. And I just got to give them their flowers, bro, because this dude, Justin Fields, looks like a completely 
completely different quarterback. Completely different quarterback. I saw a statistic today. It said the only quarterbacks to it was it was a statistic that compared him and Aaron Rodgers, and I'll have to find it to be a hundred percent exact. But it was the only two quarterbacks that have a certain completion percentage over the the first three weeks of the NFL, and it's Justin Fields and Aaron Rodgers side by side. We would have never had that conversation a few years back. And I don't think we'll ever have that conversation about a Bears quarterback until they clear house. So, like, with Justin Fields doing what he's doing and watching him ball out um, over in Pittsburgh, like, what do you think that secret sauce is there? And, like, what do you think they're doing different that the Chicago Bears haven't done in their organization? This is honestly the best I've seen Justin Field play since college, since Ohio State. He just looks more confident, more comfortable. And he's just, like, happy. Like, they're 3-0. and They have the best defense in the league. They're allowing 10 or fewer points, which is the most the Steelers have done in 15 years. I'm talking about mm. the Troy Palomalu, James Harrison days when they were uh, winning Super Bowls. Like, Justin Fields, I believe the Steelers team is a playoff team. I'm not going to say they're going to win the AFC or make an AFC title game, but I believe they can make a wild card. And they got a chance in their division. Like, Justin Fact. Fields is throwing doubts. This man had over 200 uh, total yards yesterday. He can run on his feet. And he was, you know, he had a passing touchdown, too. So, with the weapon and system he's in, this is a perfect system because the Steelers have been struggling to get a quarterback since Big Ben retired. We saw Kenny Pickett wasn't it. And Russell Wilson, just like, he's just an old veteran now. He's just going to do his thing from the sideline. But Fields, this is perfect, dude. He's, he's a dual threat. And Mike Tomlin, dude's never had a losing season, so he finally got the Man. young quarterback. He could breed for some time. And it kind of shows the Bears, it's like, you lost a good one. You lost somebody that you could have. And DJ Moore, it I really saw, did. Uh, um, I saw an interview he did a year ago that they retweeted last week saying, Justin Fields is better than a lot of these guys in the 2024 draft. He said this mm-hmm. last season. So he knew what they were losing. So I'm happy to see him thrive, and I think they're a playoff team. And it's, it's crazy that you bring up the DJ Moore thing, too, because toward the back end of the season, and we talked about this in the offseason, we we had a conversation. We were saying, okay, the Bears started to look better. They looked pretty good with Justin Fields at the end of last season. They played the Lions, and they had an advantage. We've seen a connection of DJ Moore and Justin Fields. They were thriving. It's just the defense was a little weaker back then, so they couldn't really close the deal against a tough Detroit Lions team. And, when, and I mentioned like three or four other games where this was the same exact case. But above all, we've seen that connection between Justin Fields and the Kim chemistry of everybody else on that offense start to gel a little bit better than what we've seen them start. But now all of a sudden, you know, tables turn and now you reset all of that. Now you reset your receiver quarterback connection. You reset your quarterback offensive lineman connection, your quarterback running back connection. You reset all of that stuff and it plays a huge part in you know, having awful play calling, again, just does not help. And the thing that really bothers me, it, it just drives me crazy because I look at the stats and everything and I just, I see Caleb Williams. People are are drooling over the fact that he almost threw for 400 yards. I've seen a statistic, it said he's the only Chicago Bears quarterback um, to, to throw for uh, 300, over 360 yards, you know, within his first three games. And, and I'm like, OK, that that stuff sounds cute. It, it, it looks good. It looks nice on paper when you see a fancy graphic. But also the thing people are forgetting. You give damn near any quarterback 50 chances to throw the ball. He's going to throw for 400 yards. Can you imagine giving C.J. Stroud 50 freaking chances to throw the ball? It's ridiculous. Jared Goff had – hey, hey, that was a terrible example, but Jared Goff had 50 yeah. chances. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I, I, I mess with the Lions fans a little bit. And it was just abnormal. It was abnormal to see quarterbacks throw the ball that much. So it's, it's wild, man. And, and you the know, thing is, not to cut you off, man. No, you could. 50 pass attempts with no touchdown passes. No touchdowns. With, like, it's it's wild, bro. And, and I'm looking at, like, the play calling and just how the offense is orchestrated between them and, and the Pittsburgh Steelers and, like, I'm like, Stillers really struck gold at this point, and I, I just got to leave with this. I'll, I'll leave with this. Should they continue to, to start Justin Fields? I, I, I believe they should because he roll with the hot hand. Hell, roll with the hot hand. He's balling. He's doing his thing. But I got to ask you, should they keep going with Justin Fields or, you know, insert Russ as a starter as they proclaim in the beginning of the season? 
No, keep, keep Justin Fields. You keep Ryan the hot hand. And two, this is the best scenario for the Steelers. They got Justin Fields and Russell Wilson. People are like, why do you guys have two starting quarterbacks? Justin Fields is a younger guy. You can develop him. He could be their starting quarterback if his cards play right for the next 10 years. He Facts. could be their next franchise guy. He's still young. So I will keep rolling with Justin Fields. And if he continues to have a good season, you make the postseason, this is your guy for the future. Because they've been you looking for mind. somebody – to have stability to replace Big Ben because you've had the defense. Now you got the quarterback for your offense. This is a playoff team. Absolutely, bro. I 1,000% agree with that, especially just because, I mean, Fields, he's been playing out of this world, bro. You got to keep him. He's younger. Like, he's only going to get better from here with the right guidance.